Today I'm going to take you through a surgical procedure in which I will show you how to do a MEPO plating for a distal fibula fracture. Now not all fractures of distal fibula can be treated with this technique. However, certain fractures such as simple transverse fracture, simple oblique fracture or fractures which require uh, just bridge plating can easily be done by this MEPO technique. So I'll take you step by step as how to do this procedure safely today. So a patient today is a 59 year old gentleman who unfortunately had a road traffic accident and has got a multifragmentary fracture of distal tibia as well as distal fibula. The injury is closed. So we aim to do a percutaneous uh, plate fixation of uh, both tibia and fibula and I'll take you step by step as how to do it. So now this is our theater setup. Uh, our patient is prepped and draped and uh, I usually like to keep um, or paint up to um, the upper or mid thigh. We have applied the tunique and because we are going to aim MEPO, we are not inflated it, but however, if we ex when experience any difficulty or too much bleeding, then you have that option of uh, inflating the tunique. Our uh, C arm will come from the opposite side and our C arm screen is right in the front. Our trolley will be on the side that I am uh, operating. I've also got a uh, a bolster under his hip so you can see the foot is internally rotated uh, because it's a fracture of distal fibula so I'm going to fix it and hence I put a bolster so that I don't have to struggle. When you are doing MEPO I think you should use uh, CM as much as you can so what I have done is I put a drill bit in the end and this has given me the distal end of the fibula so we are at the tip I'm going to palpate the front and the back and then I'm going to draw and then I'll show you how to proceed. So now I have uh, drawn the fibula for you. You can see that this is the front, this is the back, this is the tip that we used our C arm to locate and I, all you have to do is just to palpate and once you palpate you will be able to feel the shaft. So this way the shaft is going so this is more or less how the fibula is. So we will first make a small incision here uh, in order to expose the distal fibula and then I will tell you what is the next step. So, so skin incision is pretty straightforward so just stay in the middle and because we are not using tunica you will expect some bleeding. Let's have a self retainer. So I'm just going to stay in line of my incision till I can feel the fibula and I can start feeling the fibula so because of the edema there is a lot of edema here so we're just going to use some swab and then I'm going to expose the distal fibula. So now we have dissected skin subcutaneous tissue I'm just going to use the periosteum just to create a space now this is the back of the fibula I can feel it this is the tip and this is the front. So now once I have cleared the distal fibula, I'm just going to use the same equipment to create an epiperiosteal space just in line with the distal, um, sorry, fibular shaft. And I'm so once you have cleared front and back, just use the periosteum and just create a space. And you can see I'm going in line of my bone. And I can feel it. And as you do it, you can feel the bone so that you are you feel that you are on the right space. So once you have created the space, then next step will be to measure the right size plate and then try to fix it. So next step is to put the plate on the side and check it on the C arm that if the length is good. On this occasion, I'm happy with this eight hole one third tubular plate. So bend the one third tubular plate is extremely easy. I use the screwdriver of the small fragment and just bend the tip just a little bit like this, rest all it will conform itself and the second bend is usually slightly on the top. So it will become something like this and once your plate is there, all you need to do is to pass it in this epiperiosteal space that you have created and then fix it both distally first and then proximally in order to secure the fracture. 
So now just pass the plate in the space that you have created and you will feel the grating onto the bone and then once the plate is inside, you just need to decide the level at what is the right level. Yeah. Now once I have passed my plate, I wanted to check the position and I have checked the position in the C-arm. The position of the plate distally looks pretty good. At the same time, I use something like an artery clip to find out what is the proximal extent of the plate. So if I can have a marking pen, this is the proximal aspect of the plate. So I'm just going to make a small incision here so that we ensure that plate is dead lateral distally as well as dead lateral proximally. So again I'm making a smaller, small incision and I will dissect it directly onto the bone in a layered fashion and then I will ensure that plate is lateral. So now you can see that my fibula proximally is exposed, however my plate is not seen. That means the plate has gone posterior, so I am just going to readjust my plate and once I am happy with the position, I will show you how it looks. So now after the readjustment of the plate, now you can see the plate is dead lateral both distally as well as proximally. So I am just going to put one screw, a uh, few screws distally and then I am going to put uh, the third screw proximally. So now you should know, in, you should know your uh, sets uh, well. We are going to use a small fragment set. So this is uh, a 2.5 drill. So I'm just going to make unicortical drill because this is a cancellous area. And usually the screw size is around 18. So let's have an 18 uh, cancellous screw. So I'm just going to put a size 18 cancellous screw. the plate proximally so that it doesn't change the direction. So it's a good bite. So again, when you're doing the distal screws, you just need to break one cortex. And this is definitely at an angle because then you will be able to get a good length. Otherwise, if you go horizontal like this, the screw length is usually very small. So you just need to angle it and just one cortex is enough. You don't want to be going into the articular surface. So again, let's have an 18 screw, please. So now, in order to gain the fibular length, my assistant is uh, applying a longitudinal traction so that we have gained length and then I'm drilling it. So measure the length and use an appropriate size screw. So now we have put one screw proximally, it was size 14, size looks okay. If you look at the anchor mortise, the anchor mortise is congruent, there is no tailor shift, no tailor tilt. So this, uh, we have gained the length, now it's just a matter of filling the rest of the screw holes. I am just going to use the third screw and I think that will be more than enough for the proximal fragment. So now I am just going to use the same incision, I have used this uh, 3.5, 2.5 drill sleeve and I am checking my position on the C-arm. If you look at the C-arm images, you will see our drill sleeve is right in the center of the hole. That means our position is good and we are good to go. So I am just going to drill and replace it with a suitable size screw after measuring it. Now if you look at the distal fibula, the fibula is nicely reduced. We have put three screws proximally and three screws distally. I think that is more than enough. Um, I will see if I can put one more screw because that screw will pull the distal fragment even more close to the plate and that might reduce one of two mm gap that is still seen at the fracture side. But overall, still I would accept it. So this looks pretty good. So again through the same incision, checking the position of the our sleeve and checking the position on our C arm. I will show you, I have drilled it and it looks pretty good. So if you look, the position of our drill looks pretty good. Again, you don't want to be penetrating and going into this inferior tibiofibular joint. Uh, you should be careful that you don't go into the joint. Uh, I try to not go into the joint. So my only job now is to replace it with a suitable size screw and that will be the end of an operation. So, 
our plate fixation done and I think it's just a matter of routine closure and this is how you do a MEPO of a distal fibula fracture. You know? So I use number one Vicryl in the deep layer. When you are in the proximal part of the incision, just make sure that you don't encounter superficial peroneal layer because sometimes you do. On this occasion, we were trying to do this surgery without tourniquet, but our tourniquet was acting uh, as a venous tourniquet, so it was bleeding a lot and I didn't want to take the tunic off completely, so I had to inflate my tunique. So there's no harm if you want to inflate it and, and do this operation, there's no harm. Uh, it just makes your life a bit easier and you don't encounter any bleeding and you can do this operation much quicker. So if you want, you can use the tunique, there's no harm in it. So I'm just going to close routine and then we'll, next layer will be our dermis and then it will be some non-absorbable skin sutures. Now, as I say in most of my operation, the most important part of an operation is uh, closure. So, be meticulous, make sure that your plate is not seen. You can see that I have covered the plate and I've covered the plate proximally and I'm going to do the same distally. So, if you do a good closure, your good operation will remain good. Otherwise, if you have oozing, from the wound and if you have infection, then sometimes it leads to infection. It can be quite heartbreaking that you have done a good operation and the operation has not succeeded because of a bad closure. So be very, very meticulous when you're closing. So now this is our operation done. We have used few sutures here, few sutures here. We're just going to use some sterile dressing and that is the end of the operation. So yes, this was a demonstration on how to do a MEPO plating for a distal fibula fracture. Now again, it is a very rewarding operation as you disrupt uh, very less blood supply across the fracture site and size of the incision is also less. The rate of fracture healing and wound complication, uh, the wound complication is less and the fracture healing is much better. I would try to upload a separate video on which I do an interfrac screw with MEPO technique as well. But with this video, I'm sure you should be able to do a MEPO technique for fibula for simple fractures. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, do subscribe and do share our channel.